hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from Fearsome Tales for Fiendish Kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called Dr. Moribundus. Such a sickly child was Lorelei Lee. Pale paper cheeks, heavy lidded eyes, stumbling gait, and a waifish voice that squeaked most piteously when describing her ailments to parents and doctors alike. Oh, how she suffered, this poor, weakened child! How she bore her misfortune with stoical fortitude! How her sickness was never a problem to anyone else but herself! During term time, of course. In the school holidays, her powers of recovery were nothing short of miraculous. Lorelei Lee was a shammer. She'd do anything to get out of going to school, short of actually cutting her nose off. In the middle of winter, she'd sleep with her head out of the window and her feet in a bucket of ice in an attempt to catch cold. In summer, she'd cover her neck and arms in honey to sweeten her flesh for the mosquitoes so that they'd bite her and give her malaria. She'd eat secret bowlfuls of jam and sticky cakes in her bedroom to bring up spots, and she'd lie for hours in the bath till her skin dried out and flaked off in chunks. What is it? her mother would shriek. Leprosy, Lorelei Lee would reply. And I was so looking forward to school today. She'd stick plasters all over her body and savagely rip them off, leaving ugly red welts underneath. It's the plague, wailed her mother. And Lorelei Lee had another three days in her bed. She'd press a freezing wet flannel to her forehead to simulate cold sweats, eat curried chilies at midnight to raise a fever, and slip live money spiders down the back of her throat to give herself a really effective tickly cough. On the days when she had nothing blotchy or phlegmy to show her mother, she'd feign dizziness or stomach cramps and claim to have a temperature. When her mother brought a thermometer, Lorelei Lee would stir her cup of tea with it, or stick it on top of the radiator before slipping it under her tongue. A hundred and eight, her mother would shriek, or a hundred and twelve. People were supposed to die at a hundred and four. Her mother would go into a windmill flat, knocking pictures off the wall in her haste to reach the telephone and call out the doctor. And Lorelei Lee would secure another twenty-four-hour bunk-off from school. Every morning was the same. Once Lorelei Lee had tricked her mother into letting her stay home with a performance of feeble moans and feigned gasps of pain, the one little girl would rally sufficiently to enjoy a large breakfast of two boiled eggs and six slices of buttered toasty soldiers. Are you sure you can manage all that? her mother would ask concernedly. I'll try, Lorelei Lee would tremble, coughing softly into her duvet. And I'll try to go to school tomorrow. I, I promise. You know how much I hate to be ill. Now you just lie back and get better, her mother would say. Then she'd run down to the shops while Lorelei Lee trampolined on her bed and buy fifteen different comics, a dozen puzzle books, and a large bar of nutty chocolate, because that was Lorelei Lee's favourite. The rest of the day alternated between telly-watching and watching the telly. She sat up in bed and channel-hopped until her mother carried up her next meal, whereupon, hearing her mother's footsteps on the landing, she would ease herself under the covers and pretend that she had just woken up and was feeling a little bit better, but still couldn't tell how she was going to be tomorrow. Come night time, however, when her father returned from the office, Lorelei Lee would jump out of bed and declare herself perfectly cured and raring to go. Every night, you see, 
Her father would return home with a get-well present for his delicate princess, a bow for her pretty head, a pair of silk stockings or a nursey-nursey doll to take care of while he was away. It has to be said that the doctors who attended Lorelei Lee's sickbed were a useless bunch. Overworked and under her thumb, they flitted in and out of her bedroom like gadflies, pausing just long enough to take her pulse and tap three fingers on her back. To a man and woman, they declared themselves baffled by her illnesses. They hadn't a clue what was wrong with her, but happily wrote out the prescriptions that Lorelei Lee demanded, deliciously sweet blackcurrant pastels for her permanently sore throat, soothing tiger balm for her fevered brow, and a dozen acacia honey milkshakes, the sort most people use for slimming, but which Lorelei Lee just happened to like rather a lot. One day, however, Lorelei Lee went too far. The sun was shining as she got out of bed, She'd never felt better in her life, but she had Latin at school before break, and she hated dead languages. A spectacular disease was called for. As she stood at the sink, brushing her teeth, she had an idea. Hearing Lorelei Lee's distressed cries, her mother took the stairs five at a time. She burst into the bedroom to see her daughter lying on the floor, shaking like a jelly and foaming at the mouth. A huge white waterfall of foam cascading over her lips and dribbling down her chin onto the carpet. Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? screamed her apoplectic mother. Are you ill, Lorelei Lee? Well, I fear that I am, trembled Lorelei Lee's lathering larynx. Are you going to die? blurted her mother. Well, let's put it like this. I wouldn't bother cooking me lunch, groaned Lorelei Lee dramatically, checking to see how her performance was going down. Her mother was kneeling on the floor with her head propped against the end of the bed, blubbing like a two-stroke lawnmower. I think I've got rabies, announced Lorelei Lee. Rabies? The word sank into her mother's heart like a mad dog's tooth. Rabies, she gasped. That's a serious one, isn't it? Lorelei Lee nodded her head. Worth at least two days off school, I'd say, she said. Well, I must get a specialist before you turn into a werewolf, howled her mother as she sprinted out of the bedroom and clattered down the stairs to the phone. Lorelei Lee wiped the toothpaste off her chin and grinned. What a sensational actress she was. Fifteen minutes later, there was a screech of brakes in the street outside. Lorelei Lee looked out of her window and saw a smartly dressed man carrying a briefcase step out of a chauffeur-driven Rolls Royce. He was met at the gate by her mother and ushered inside. As they climbed the stairs, Lorelei Lee touched up her foam and hopped into bed. When her mother entered the room with the besuited gentleman, Lorelei Lee was lying quite still, as stiff as a corpse staring up at the ceiling like a stuffed fox with glass eyes. This is Dr Nick, said her mother, with lips that fluttered from fear and mental anguish. He's from the government, Lorelei Lee. He wants to ask you some questions. Lorelei Lee concentrated hard on the light fitting to stop herself from blinking. Hello, said Dr Nick, sitting down on the bed and placing his hand on her forehead. I'm the world's foremost expert on rabies. A foremost expert? Lorelei Lee gulped. How are we feeling? She didn't answer. She just kept staring. Are we hot? She nodded. Well, that's strange because your forehead's stone cold. How's the pulse? He inquired, picking up her wrist with two fingers and a thumb. He counted to thirty. No, nothing wrong there. Then he dipped his long finger into the puddle of foam on Lorelei Lee's duvet and licked it with the tip of his tongue. Hmm, he noted with surprise. Peppermint. And when did the foaming start, before or after you cleaned your teeth? 
Lorelei Lee closed her eyes and pretended to faint so she wouldn't have to answer any more tricky questions. He was dead smart, this doctor, not like the others. Fortunately, Lorelei Lee's mother flipped her lid at precisely this moment, distracting the doctor's attention from her daughter's despicable deception. Is my precious angel going to live? She bawled. Your precious angel, said the doctor grimly, swallowing each word like a bitter pill, will survive. Then he muttered under his breath, more's the pity. He was a busy man and didn't like having his time wasted. But should I send her to school? No, not until she's had my prescription, he ordered flatly, scribbling a quick note which he handed to Lorelei Lee's mother. See to it that she takes this tonight, once and once only, twice will kill her. And this will cure her of the rabies? My dear lady, replied the tall doctor, backing out of the room like an undertaker at a funeral retiring from the coffin. It will cure her of a whole lot more than that. Lorelei Lee opened an eye and wondered what he meant. The strange thing was that even though Lorelei Lee's mother went to six different chemists, none of them had ever heard of Dr. Nick's prescription. Well, nobody knows what this Medicus Moribundus is, she panicked when her husband got home from work that night, and Dr. Nick specifically said that Lorelei Lee was to take it tonight. How is she now? he asked. Oh, much better, she replied. She was, she was a bit off colour after Dr. Nick left, hardly touched her breakfast, but she had three helpings at lunch, and she's upstairs now eating her supper in front of the telly. Well, then there's nothing to worry about, is there? comforted Lorelei Lee's father. We don't need Dr. Nick's prescription if she got rid of the rabies on her own. Just then, the doorbell rang. A long, haunting chime that only ceased when Lorelei Lee's father slid open the door. Standing on the doorstep was a fat woman dressed in a bulging black uniform. She had a patch over one eye and a wild thatch of hair that sat on the top of her head like a gorse bush. She was carrying a Gladstone bag and presenting a calling card for Lorelei Lee's father to take. At your service, she lisped, spraying the hall with her spittle. Go on, take the card, it won't bite. I'm sorry, puzzled Lorelei Lee's father. Who did you say you were? Oh, silly, silly me, slobbered the fat black lady. I forgot. I am the night nurse, assistant to the world-famous healer and medicine man, Dr. Moribundus. You sent for us? If she slobbered much more, Lorelei Lee's father would need to put his anorak on. Who is it? called out Lorelei Lee's mother from the kitchen. Well, a Dr. Moribundus, replied her husband. What do you want? he asked, turning back to the night nurse. But the slavering stranger was no longer there. In her place was a tall black pillar, a man in a black cape and jack boots, a man with curly black painted fingernails, a man with a thin black beard down the centre of his chin like a duelling scar, a man with long black hair beneath a wide brimmed hat, a man with cold black eyes, a man, or so Lorelei Lee's father suspected, with a heart as black as the long dark night before God shone his torch on the world. Good evening, said Dr. Moribundus. We've come to see Lorelei Lee. Did you say Dr. Moribundus, said Lorelei Lee's mother, excitedly, coming through from the kitchen? Well, th that's what Medicus Moribundus must mean. Have you come with Lorelei Lee's prescription? No, madam, said the shadowy figure. I am Lorelei Lee's prescription. Now, if it please you, I would see the patient now. He took a stride through the door and stood in the middle of the hall. His nose twitched. Ah, yes, he sniffed. I can smell her. Upstairs quickly, nurse. We have precious little time if we are to save the poor soul. 
Lorelei Lee's mother gasped. You mean my beautiful baby might die? Well, she's not a well child, said the doctor. Her frequent absence from school would indicate a weak constitution. Under such circumstances, I always advise parents to prepare for the worst. Oh! Lorelei Lee's mother swooned into her husband's arms. But we will do what we can for her. Come, nurse, away! Well, shouldn't we be there? panicked Lorelei Lee's father. Can't we help? In cases as serious as this, sir, uh, tis best I work alone. But I must warn you not to interrupt my labours, no matter what you hear, for there will be screams. You must not enter the bedroom. Lorelei Lee's salvation rests in my hands alone. Now I must to work, for there is much to be done. Dr. Moribunda swept up the stairs, trailing his billowing cape like a vulture's wings, while Lorelei Lee's mother and father stood in the hall like a couple of prunes at a plum wedding. Lorelei Lee was watching peak practice when the doctor and his assistant burst into the room. Cattons, ordered Dr. Moribundus, locking the door behind him, and switch that television off. Who are you? snapped Lorelei Lee. Get out of my bedroom. The doctor threw off his cape and pulled her dressing table over to the side of the bed. Shut up, he said, or I'll tear out your tongue, and I'm a doctor, you can trust me. Lorelei Lee cowered back onto a pillow as the night nurse unpacked the doctor's bag onto the dressing table, laying out his medicines and surgical instruments in neat little rows. Now I hear you've not been well, said the doctor, snapping a pair of rubber gloves onto his hands. So what's been the problem, he asked, removing the lid off a jar full of leeches. Nothing, exclaimed Lorelei Lee. I'm fine. That's not what the school register says, said Dr. Moribundus. Roll her over, please, nurse. No, really, I I'm much better, squealed Lorelei Lee as the night nurse tumbled her roughly onto her back and pinned down her arms. Bloodletting, said the doctor, attaching a dozen leeches to the shaking girl's neck and arms, purifies the system better than anything else I know. Ow! Ow! They're biting! squeaked Lorelei Lee. They're leeches, my dear. They're meant to. They've only just started, cackled the night nurse. Wait till they fuck! You dry! Lorelei Lee could feel the leeches slithering behind her ears. She screamed. Oh, the patient is hysterical, said the nurse. Shall I prepare the calming mustard poultice, doctor? Dr. Moribundus nodded his head. Smear it all over, he instructed his assistant. Will it hurt? wailed Lorelei Lee. Oh, I hope so smiled the doctor. No pain, no gain. Downstairs, Lorelei Lee's parents sat in silence listening to their daughter's screams and did nothing. They were following doctor's orders. You see, smiled Dr. Moribundus as the nurse unwrapped the hot mustard poultice from the girl's blistered skin. I believe in the powers of alternative medicine. What we have here is a severe case of no-school-itis. And you know what that means, nurse. The assistant rubbed her podgy hands together gleefully. Snip, snip, she snickered. Brain surgery, pronounced Dr. Moribundus. Brain surgery, yelped Lorelei Lee. But brain surgery is not an alternative medicine. It is the way I do it, leered Dr. Moribundus with a sparkle in his eye. I'm cured, shrieked Lorelei Lee, sitting up on her bed. Not yet, but you will be, retorted the doctor. Scrub up and sterilise, nurse. But I'm OK now. I'm as fit as a flea, begged the quivering girl. Now, this might hurt a little bit, said the doctor, testing the sharpness of his scalpel by opening a vein in his finger. But when the operation is over, I guarantee you won't have another day's illness in your life. 
I will go to school, pleaded Lorelei Lee. Every day, just you see. Too late for that now, said Dr. Moribandus. Nurse? Yes? The needle. It was five feet long like a javelin. The nurse produced it from Dr. Moribandus's black bag like a sword from a scabbard. The steel shaft glinted as he tapped out the air bubbles inside the syringe and squeezed the plunger. Lorelei Lee whimpered as the night nurse dragged her to her feet. But I haven't got rabies, she cried. I don't need an injection. Oh, I know, said the doctor, leaping onto the bed and plunging the needle into the top of her skull. He pushed down hard until it poked out the bottom of her feet. She was skewered to the floor like a lump of kebab meat, pinned by a steel spine running from her head to her toe, muted by a silver bodkin through her tongue. Only her wide eyes, standing proud like two Vaseline golf balls, gave any hint of her fear. Dr. Moribundus picked up a saw. With three powerful strokes, he sliced off the top of her head and flipped back the lid to expose her brain. Comfortable? he asked. The nurse handed him a teaspoon. He dipped it into Lorelei Lee's skull, flicked out the bad bit in her brain that made her feign illness, and ate it, just as you or I would eat a soft, boiled egg. When Lorelei Lee awoke in the morning, she was glowing with health. She was in the pinkest of pinks and looking forward to school. From then on, she never had another day's illness in her life. Even when she caught a cold, she kept it a secret, just in case Dr. Moribandus paid her another visit in the middle of the night. She missed school only once again when the top of her head mysteriously flipped open in a gale. But she was only absent for a morning while they stapled the two halves back together. By 12 o'clock, she was back in class, being tested on her Latin vocabulary. Can anyone tell me what Medicus Moribundus means? asked the teacher. Yes, Lorelei Lee. Is it a big plunging needle? she lisped through the hole in her tongue. The teacher laughed, scratching the thin black beard down the center of his chin. Now I wonder what gave you that idea, he said. Needles to say, Lorelei Lee didn't tell him. <laughs> <laughs>